Good evening and thanks for joining us on Nationwide Today. I'm Elizabeth Omori. President Mohamed Buhari has granted audience to the Benue State Governor Summer Autumn, who was allegedly attacked recently by gunmen along Makadi Boko Road. It was the first formal engagement between the President and the Governor since May 2019. State House correspondent Adam Musamu reports. I had to see Mr. President, first of all, to commend him for the statement uh, he issued when I was attacked. Uh, it was quite consoling and his directive that a thorough investigation be done and the criminal elements uh, fish out. I think it was important. Governor Samuel Otom also appreciated President Muhammad Buhari for his recent order to security agencies to shoot aside anyone carrying illegally an AK-47 rifle. And I think that is welcoming and uh, is the best thing to do in a situation like this. And the order to also for the immigration and other security agencies to protect our borders. I think all these are, are commended. During the meeting held behind closed doors, Governor Otom briefed the president on what he called the internal security problems in his state and forwarded some recommendations on the best way forward. And uh, he has accepted it and even advised me on what to do. And uh, the rest is for me to follow up with security agencies that I'm going to do. The security challenges in our country today is not about president. It's not about we governors. It's about every citizen of this country. So we must work together to summon this. We cannot continue in this manner. The way things are going, if we don't secure the country, there is no way we can be talking about 2023. That is why I've always dismissed people who come to me to say that you will contest this, you will contest that. For me, I want us as leaders of this country, we have taken oath of office, let us abide by those things we have said and work together as a team. Leave politics aside, leave ethnicity aside, but secure the country in Nigeria. The governor who dismissed insinuations in some quarters that the attack on him was state managed used the opportunity to plead with Nigerians not to politicize the issue of security, saying if a governor is attacked, it is indeed an attack on all. President Muhammad Buhari also had a special consultation with the Minister of Defense Bashir Salih Magashi and the Chief of Defense Staff General Lucky Irabo. Details of their discussions held behind closed doors were not made public. The nation's armed forces are currently under a presidential marching order to bring to an end terrorism, insurgency, and other acts of criminality undermining national security and stability. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News. The positive feedback being received from beneficiaries of the MSME Survival Fund will further support the federal government into finding more ways of supporting operators and to continue working hard to meet the expectations of all Nigerians. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju stated this at a separate virtual interactions with leaders of road transport owners associations and some owners of private schools who, commenced, who commended the federal government for the transparency and unbiased manner the survival fund is being executed. State House correspondent Gideon Onifadi reports. Umar Muhammad Salisu is a commercial tricycle operator in the federal capital territory. He is here alongside other commercial tricycle and motorcycle operators who were affected by the COVID-19 lockdown. There is lack of plenty days on it, so I need money to repair it. So this money I was highly appreciated of having it. And um, they have made through their promise. The people from Oyo, Ondo, Ogun, Osun, Ekiti, they have started uh, receiving the alert. In one tire or two tires, some of them are their engines is shorting engine oil. They use the advantage of that 30,000 naira to go and repair their tricycles. At this virtual interaction between Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo and leaders of various road transport owners associations, the MSME Survival Fund Committee, under the leadership of Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Mariam Katagum, is being commended for its transparency in the process of the disbursement of the fund earmarked for the program. We are very, very grateful for the survival funds received by our members throughout the nation. You may see this 30,000 
thousand naira as a small money, but it has gone a long way in giving relief to our members. Questions and suggestions on issues concerning security and the economy are taken on board. And Vice President Oshimbajo assures that the federal government is addressing all the issues. So I'm glad to hear that uh, substantial percentages of people have received the funds. Uh, those who have not, those who have not, you can be assured that uh, once you have been, once your people have been enumerated, they will uh, receive, uh, they will receive their funds. One of the steps that, of course, you know, uh, we've taken is that of, uh, of taking away duty on, uh, on commercial trucks and vehicles. And certainly, we're going to be taking a good look again at this issue of being able to fund uh, commercial operators. At the success of the scheme. Similarly, Vice President Oshimbaju interacts with some private school owners and beneficiaries of the payroll support, which is a part of the Survival Fund program and to be implemented under the Economic Sustainability Plan to offset costs incurred on salaries. I think going forward, uh, wherever we find the opportunity to assist the private schools, uh, we'll do the much uh, that we could. And to like Kumaro, the commercial tricycle operator, and his colleagues, the private school owners are equally showing appreciation to the federal government for the support and appealed on behalf of those who are yet to receive. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NJ News. President Muhammad Buhari has written to Senate seeking the confirmation of Salamatu Suleiman and Fatin Adas as chairman and members of the National Human Rights Commission. The presidential request will be preferred and referred to the relevant committee at a later date for the screening exercise and subsequent consideration at plenary. Meanwhile, the legislators have confirmed the appointment of Wakili Bukhar for appointment as Commissioner for Federal Civil Service Commission. The Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria Act Amendment Bill, which seeks to extend the tenure of the Resolution Cost Fund, sponsored by Senator Kwayemi Bamidele, passed second reading. Meanwhile, the Nigeria needs more innovative ideas in tackling the present security challenges being experienced in the country. This opinion, this opinion resonated at the screening of the Director General nominee of the National Space Research and Development Agency by Senate Committee on Science and Technology, Mubalaji Morobini reports. Lilu Ahmad Shaba is the presidential nominee to oversee the affairs of the National Space Research and Development Agency. Critical question asked by the committee focused on the revolution the Director General designates is bringing to the table. What do you think we can do as DG of Pamban Senate to assist the security agencies in this country to use that office to ensure that the criminals terrorizing this nation will be The presidential nominee assures the committee he would work to make a difference, having functioned for years in the agency. Talk to the man who is uh, gathering intelligence for the community and also discuss with the NSC so that we just have that document and see how we can quickly start to see that the document is put into effect. This I try to highlight the aspect they gave to satellite technology and where we have to go and partner with them. Reports by the committee will be submitted to the Senate at plenary for further legislative action. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Moribiri, NTA News. Strengthening the democratic process through impactful reforms that match the aspirations of citizens should be the aim of the ongoing constitution review process. I retreat for members of the special committee holding in Abuja stressed this point. Lami Ali reports. The constitution review process has become a periodic exercise for the lawmaking arm of governments due to situations that often challenge the status quo. Over the years, progress has been made, but challenges keep evolving, some of which threaten the foundation due to manipulation of false lines, making the Constitution Review a critical assignment for the National Assembly. I cannot underscore the fundamental imperative of ensuring that we look at this exercise driven by the patriotic zeal to make our country a better place. As the largest democracy in Africa and as a leading member of the Commonwealth, Nigeria's democratic example is, is important well beyond the region. 
and it's essential, of course, that the constitution always reflects the will and aspirations of the Nigerian people. A key and important aspect of uh, constitution review would be the collaboration between both houses of the National Assembly. Chairman of the House Constitutional Review Committee and Deputy Speaker Ahmed Idris highlights the thematic areas. Other client, what they did was to create special constituencies for the women. And I think that also could be achieved in Nigeria. The issue of state creation, uh, the issue of uh, giving role to our traditional rulers, all these are very, very important. A key constitutional reform achieved by the Eighth Assembly is the Not Too Young to Run Bill, which got presidential assent. Lami Ali, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide on NTA. Time now to head to Lagos, where Dotun is standing by. Hello, Dotun. Thank you, Elizabeth. Several unapproved jetties have been sealed off while unlicensed and substandard barges have been impounded as part of efforts by federal regulatory agencies in the maritime sector to restore sanity along the Lagos water channels. This was carried out by the Joint Barge Enforcement Committee, which was set up by the Nigerian Port Authority, the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, as well as the National Inland Waterways Authority. In an effort to decongest the Apapa Port Corridor from perennial gridlock, barge operations have become an alternative for movement of cargo and have contributed to improved maritime economy. However, incidents of containers falling off barges is becoming worrisome. This clip was captured a few weeks ago around the Kirikiri axis. That, among other reasons, is why this team is out, armed and mandated to restore sanity. It is their first patrol enforcement and already the unscrupulous activities of these barge operators make stronger conviction the need for such enforcement. We have come here and discovered that there is a barge here uh, called Judith. This barge has no certificate. The master of the barge has no exemption certificate. The barge is doing operation within the Nigerian waterways in Lagos here. And the captain told us that the owner of this barge is in worry. Kenneth is the captain of MV Judy Grace 3. His vessel has been impounded and his documents collected for verification. He, however, claims innocence of any infringement despite operating from an illegal jetty. So I don't know if any paper is not correct or paper, any paper is fake. While this barge operator was being interrogated, the team came face to face with a prevailing concern over stacking of containers, a disaster waiting to happen, just like the damage done to this bridge spiller at Kirikiri, where barges are anchored illegally. Here now we are going to identify those jetties that have been properly licensed and approved to operate barge operation by Niwa. Anyone that is not found among this category will, will, will be completely shut down. The committee frowned at the use of substandard barges and the indiscriminate anchoring of barges, thereby congesting the port access routes with a promise to develop and ensure compliance to standard operating procedures. The efforts of the Nigerian Navy at ensuring maritime security and continued economic prosperity is a mandate towards cases of piracy. This explains why few cases occurred in 2020. The need to re-strategize for greater efficiency brought about the reposting of senior officers, one of whom is Rear Admiral Jason Bassa, who takes over as the Flag Officer Commanding Western Naval Command. Lynn Leneke reports. The Western Naval Command is the premier base of the Nigerian Navy and its operations are critical to the security of maritime assets and shipping activities in the Nigerian maritime domain. The successes achieved have been attributed to ideal leadership and strategic moves in key areas of operations. The exchange of the button of leadership in line with renewed vigor to achieve even more with the commitment of the new flag officer commanding. I'm going to count on each and every one of us, convey this to your men. I am going to work as a team. Every member must be in the team. The former FOC, Rear Admiral Oladele Daji, appreciated relevant stakeholders and other agencies for the synergy in checking illegality such as vandalism within the command area of responsibility, saving the nation 1.6 billion naira. 
most of the recoveries uh, that were made were crude oil that were loaded or stolen illegally and being transshipped uh, to for for sale uh, elsewhere, maybe outside the shores of Nigeria. The new leadership promised to consolidate on achievements of the command, including those engaged in illegal bunkering, oil thefts, gun running, smuggling, and illegal fishing, among others. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. The Lagos State Police Command says it is determined to reach the state of criminals and restore sanity in the metropolis. Annie Daniels reports that the Commissioner of Police, Akim Odumosu, disclosed this while parading some suspects for engaging in various criminal activities across the state. In recent months, Lagos State has had to grapple with high incidents of criminal activities, thereby almost making the state uninhabitable for law-abiding citizens. The Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Hakim Budumos, noted that the police, in ensuring it lives up to expectation, deployed available resources within its reach and instituted proactive strategies to enforce laws and order in every area. The whole law, the miscarriage that creates a lot of criminal activity in the state, we recall we have arrested 1,592. That the whole lot arrested. And those arrested for traffic offenses in the command, 532. The fatal accidents recorded, 103. The police boss revealed that from January 2021 till date, 234 suspected armed robbers and 343 cultists were arrested, injecting sanity into the crowded area of Lagos. Hakim Odumos advised members of the public to furnish the command with information that can lead to the arrest of criminals. Thus, he says, will significantly assist the command in performing optimally, reminding members of the public that the 12 midnight to 4 a.m. curfew still stands. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. And that's it from here. Nationwide continues after this break. You're still watching Nationwide. Now to health. Prominent Nigerians have continued to add their voices to the call on Nigerians to take advantage of the opportunity provided by the federal government to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Former President General Yakubu Gowon, who was vaccinated at his residence in Abuja, says the vaccine will go a long way in reducing the spread of the virus. Aisha Bashir reports. Shortly after being vaccinated at his Asoko residence in Abuja, the elder statesman who received the COVID-19 vaccine alongside his wife says he is pleased to receive the vaccine despite the fears expressed by some people. All that I can say is that please, this is good for you and good for others and good for the health of all Nigerians. Uh, this. Uh, the you know, problem is it is worldwide. It can really be can create greater havoc for the uh, for the nation. General Yakubu Gawan urged Nigerians not to hesitate to get vaccinated, as it is a means of safeguarding lives against the coronavirus pandemic. Acting Executive Secretary FCT Primary Health Care Board, Dr. Ewat Indayo, who is also the chairman of the Social Mobilization Subcommittee FCT, says the board is driving the process of vaccinating the populace in the FCT to ensure that all Nigerians get access to the vaccine. So you can see that we are not uh, you know, trying to counteract negative publicity out there. We want to drive positive information to the society, to the public. Let people know that this thing is safe. Why we encourage and we appeal to fellow Nigerians that they should go and take the COVID-19 vaccine is safe. Members of the committee are going around to sensitize FCT residents to ensure smooth vaccination exercise. Aisha Bashir, NTA News. Meanwhile, Governor Bilu Mohammed of Zamfara State has received the first dose of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine as re echoed the assurance given by the federal government on the efficacy and safety of the vaccine. This marks the formal commencement of the inauguration exercise across the 14 local government areas of the state. Jamilu Brian has more. 
Zamfar State Governor Bello Muhammad was administered the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine by the State Commissioner for Health, Yahya Muhammad Kanuma, at Government House Gusau. <laughs> Other top government officials that received the job along with the governor are the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Nasurum Azu Magaria, and the Deputy Chief of Staff Government House, Gusau, Dr. Bashir Maru. The governor who enjoins people in the state, especially the frontline workers, to present themselves for the inoculation. This is for all of us. So it's safe and we only uh, for it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us. So I therefore urge each and every one of you to make sure that he shall obtain his own card, he shall take his own vaccine in order to protect him from uh, this kind of uh, notorious diseases. Zamfara State Commissioner for Health, Yahya Muhammad Kanuma, said the event marks the formal commencement of the vaccination exercise across all the 40 local government areas of the state, starting with the frontline workers, top government officials, traditional and religious leaders in Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And an Argus Center for Disease Control has announced 131 new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. In the latest figure, Lagos has the highest with 64 new infections, Rivers 12, Kaduna 11, Plateau 9, Jigawa 8, Bayelsa 6, Ondo 5, Eboin, FCT and Oshun have four each, while Burno, Kano, Ogun and Oyo have one new case each. With this, Nigeria now has 161,868 confirmed cases of COVID-19, out of which 148,125 were discharged, while 2,030 died of the virus. The federal government says that telemedicine facility at the Federal Medical Center Idiaba, Abelkota, Ogun State, is targeted at reducing out-of-patient visits to the hospital by connecting patients with doctors via the use of audiovisual technology for quality health care services. Minister of Health Dr. Saige Ihani restated this during the inauguration of the facility and other infrastructure at the center in Abelkota, Ogun State. Lekum Agmonde reports. Operating the facility named after President Muhammadu Buhari, the center now has capacity to provide healthcare services to patients from the comfort of their homes, thereby limiting exposure of doctors and other health professionals to patients. A telemedicine will be an integral part of it that allows not only patients to consult doctors, but makes it possible for caregivers at PHCs community health extension workers, nurses, to consult a doctor and ask for advice in the course of looking after their own patient. Members of the National Assembly, governors, ministers, among other dignitaries, lauded the federal government for providing technical support at the nation's health institutions for quality health care services to Nigerians. We also continue to use the appropriate process to fund projects that bridge the infrastructure gap and ensure that essential health care facilities are available across the country. This place is supposed to train doctors on how to use the digital network, it's supposed to train nurses. Medical director of the center, Professor Adewale Musaolomu, pleaded with the leadership of the National Assembly to pass into law the bill before it conversing for the establishment of the University of Medicine and Medical Sciences. This university will be established in no distant time and this hospital will serve as the teaching hospital to that university. Former Senator representing Ogun Central Senatorial District, Larry Waju Tejosho, facilitated the conference center and the ambulance as his constituency project when he was serving at the National Assembly in Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NTA News. And Abubakar in our Meduguri studio is standing by with reports on health matters. Hello, Abubakar. It's always good to see you, Elizabeth, and thank you for joining us. Over 200 soil doctors and extension workers have been trained under the Young Farmers Scheme of the federal government in Borno State, have graduated out of the 1,000 selected across the 27 local governments. Mohamed Goni reports that the Senate President Ahmed Lawan, who presided over the graduation ceremony, commended National Agricultural Land Development Authority and Borno State Government for organizing the training. The two weeks intensive training of 269 soil doctors and extension workers by NALDA 
in collaboration with the Borno state government was part of efforts of the federal government and authorities at subnational level to reinvigorate the agricultural sector for food sufficiency. The graduates said they will put the knowledge received to best practices to change the narrative in the agricultural sector. Those nutrients the uh, soil, uh, soil are lacking, we will make sure we improve on that. Senate President Ahmed Lawal was of the view that the choice of Borno for the pilot project in the Northeast was a right step, considering the strategic role of the state in the agricultural sector. Ceremony is more down and a march to our federal government and the efforts and improving the skills of personnel in different sectors of our economy and society. Governor Bagana Umarafu highlighted the importance attached to resuscitation of agricultural activities by his administration as captured in the 25-year development plan, express optimism that the young farmers scheme will come to fruition as NALDA has adopted a demand-driven approach. The National Agricultural Plan Development Authority for training of 1,000 youngsters as soil doctors and extension workers based on local and national knowledge and skills and training and development. Executive Secretary NALDA, Prince Paul Okoyne said 30,000 graduates in relevant field of specializations are being engaged as soil doctors and extension workers to render services on soil evaluation, soil management and extension services to farmers at subsidized rate. Director General NYSC Brigadier General Shoaibu Ibrahim expressed commitment to partnership between NALDA and his organization, noting the importance of the scheme to the ideal of the NYSC. Borno State Commissioner for Animal Resources, Juniana Bitru said, allocated land in 40 different locations across the state for Nalda's fish farming project, where 2,000 youths will be trained in addition to 40 fish processors. In Maiduguri, Mohamed Goni, NT News. Let's talk health now. 100 vesicovaginal fistula patients are currently undergoing repair surgeries sponsored by United Nations Population Fund in collaboration with Borno State Government. The surgeries are being performed at the Obstetrics Fistula Center State Specialist Hospital, Meduguri. Memuna Garba completes the story. During my delivering baby, I have this BBF, so from there I have this uh, problem. Jacqueline Bennett is one of the BBF patients who had undergone BBF repairs. Vesicovaginal fistula cases in Borno State is on the rise due to insurgency and other factors. Most of the patients we are seeing now, some of them are actually from those who had cesarean sections. Some of the fistula doesn't seem to be fistula that were actually by obstructed labor itself, but rather from the correction of the obstructed labor that we are beginning to see fistula. So we are seeing a rising increase in cesarean section fistulas. For easy access to maternal and child health care, including fistula care, a two-week project was initiated by UNFPA and Borno State Government. Already, 27 patients have undergone major repair surgery, while 73 women are on the waiting list for the minor surgeries, which will be completed within the next two weeks. United Nations Resident and Humanitarian Coordinator in Nigeria, Edward Carlon, and the Director of Medical Emergency and Humanitarian Response, Ministry of Health, Dr. Baba Shehu Mohammed as well as Medical Director at Medjugorje Specialist Hospital, Dr. Laraba Ahmed said, the fistula surgical campaign and post-surgery counseling are timely considering the fact that new fistula cases are being recorded daily at the hospital. Patients outside the hospital being attended to. In my degree, my Garba, NTA News. And those are the latest stories for now from my degree. Elizabeth in Abuja has more reports for us. So, Elizabeth. Let's take a break now. More reports ahead when we return. Thanks for staying with the NTA. Ibadan is our next stop on Nationwide and Kemi will be our guide. Hello, Kemi. Hello, Elizabeth, and welcome to Ibadan. Over 276 students in Ogolua Sururiri Federal have benefited from the 2021 Big Educational Empowerment Program. Simon Hassan has the details. This year's Bombic Educational and Empowerment Program provided an opportunity to winners whereby their medical fees were paid for by Honorable Olusha Goodomi. Goodomi promised not to relent on his efforts in ensuring qualitative education. 
program is sustainable. And I can see now that people are now believing in this course. The guest lecturer, while identifying information communication technology as a tool for development of an economy, charged the students to venture into it. Put attention on knowledge economy. It is huge. The resources there is huge. And I want to tell you, we have the capacity to do it. Nigerians are brilliant and we are making waves. Of the 276 participants, 40 emerged winners, laptops, cash, and certificates were also presented to them. Lukman Hassan, NTA News. In a bid to avail health workers' opportunity for requisite knowledge in the administration of COVID-19 vaccine, federal government has embarked on their training nationwide. Respondent Rofia Nemashon Badmus reports that health workers in Oyo State are also to take part in the program. The COVID-19 vaccination training is developed for frontline health workers in the country who will take lead in COVID-19 vaccination with necessary skills and knowledge to ensure safe and efficient COVID-19 vaccine administration. Apart from general preventive measures to reduce the spread of the virus, healthcare workers would undertake additional preventive measures in their facilities to protect themselves. The vaccination is going to be for 10 days. It's going to be 10, uh, that's 10 days in a month, then for four months. We are taking them through the basics of COVID-19, the strategies for the vaccination campaign, um, and um, so many other logistic and supply issues that they need to know about. Members of the public are urged to accept the vaccines as it will help combat the virus. The 127,740 doses were part of the first phase of vaccines distributed by the federal government to the states. In Ibadan, Rofia Animation Badmos, NTA News. That does it from here. Elizabeth, it's back to you. Thank you, Kemi. March 23 every year is set aside to commemorate World Meteorological Day. The commemoration for this year's 2021 marks the beginning of the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. The theme of Day 2021, which is the ocean, our climate and weather, and discuss the role of the ocean in providing data for weather forecasts, climate predictions, and climate change mitigation. The ocean is particularly celebrated as an important part of human and planetary survival because it scores 90% of greenhouse gases produced by humans, absorbs energy from the sun, creates most of the rain clouds through evaporation and retains enormous amount of energy, enough to cause extreme weather events like cyclones, tsunamis and earthquakes. Barely two weeks after the Federal Executive Council approved over 6 billion naira for water reticulation project across oil impacted communities in Ogune land. Minister of Environment Mohamed Abubakar has flagged off the first phase of the project at six sites. Robinson Deratide reports. The provision of clean drinking water is an essential part of the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP report, in the cleanup of Ogune land, which observers believed should have come first in the remediation process. Federal government, through the Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, IPREP, had entered into partnership with the River State Ministry of Water Resources to rehabilitate existing water facilities in the four Ogoni local government areas. The World Water Day with the team, Valley Water, coincided with the flag off of the first phase of the project. We have chosen to join the world on this special day to flag off the water scheme. Following this six water project also, very soon we'll be rolling out additional eight water projects for the people of Ogoni in across the four local government areas. Stakeholders express the observations about the project. So we don't need to service our generators. We don't need anybody to buy it soon. We don't need anybody to come and vandalize it. If we solarize it, if we power it with solar, I think it will be more sustainable. Make sure that we put in our expertise to make sure that these projects we are embarking upon now are sustainable. When contracts in high prep will be awarded, the good people should be considered. Let us not see food on the table and we cannot eat. 
About 5,000 needs assessment forms were given out by the minister to train rivers indigents on different scales. From Bori in River State, Robinson, Delatayde, NTA News. And for more reports on Nationwide, let's join Fatima in Markudi. Hello, Fatima. Hello, Elizabeth. Good evening and welcome to Makudi. The Benue State Security Council says it will collaborate with relevant stakeholders to unravel the circumstances behind the recent attack on Governor Samuel Otum. Charles Abba reports. The Benue State Security Council meeting follows the recent attack on Governor Samuel Otum by armed bandits on his farm along Makudi Boko Road Saturday morning. Governor Otum, while relaying the decisions of the State Security Council, explained that the meeting appreciated the concerns of Mr. President, the Inspector General of Police, APC and PDP Chairman, and Governor's Forum regarding the incident. He said the council is ready to do the needful in addition to the high power panel directed by Mr. President to investigate into the matter and prosecute the perpetrators. Everything that we need to be done, I can assure you, the Security Council will handle the matter. The governor, however, called on the federal government to arrest members of a group that accepted responsibility for the attack through a press release. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. For the Nigerian Air Force to meet its constitutional role of ensuring the territorial integrity of the country, it needs competent commanders at all levels to provide the requisite leadership, which is invaluable in achieving organizational goals. Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Oladayo Amao, stated this at the inauguration ceremony of the Maiden Air Rank Leadership Seminar held at the Air Force War College, Makudi. Blessed Nomecha Ebute reports that the Air Chief was represented by the Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command, Makudi, Air Vice Marshal Idi Lubo. The country has in recent times been faced with various security challenges ranging from kidnapping, militancy and most recently banditry. The maiden edition of the Air Rank Leadership Seminar of the Air Force War College is to help develop strategies to combat these threats and also formulate policies that will ensure the service continues to evolve into a formidable force. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Oladayo Amao, represented by the Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command Makudi, Air Vice Marshal Idi Lubo, says the course will no doubt enhance the manpower development of the Nigerian Air Force. I wish to express the appreciation of the Nigerian Air Force to the President, Commander in Chief of the Air Forces of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, for giving priority attention the training, operational efficiency, and other requirements of the science. This seminar is sought to be the current contribution to ensuring a vibrant, innovative, and resilient leadership for the Nigerian Air Force. The Air Rank Leadership Seminar, with 15 participants comprising of Air Vice Marshals and Air Commodores, is designed to help exchange ideas among participants with a view of broadening their horizon on the repositioning of the NAF to effectively combat the various emerging security challenges confronting the country. In Makudi, Blessing Omeche Ebute, NTA News. On the fight against gender-based violence, wife of the Benue State Governor, Dr. Eunice Otom, has presented a cash donation to two victims who recently suffered sexual and gender-based violence in the state to enable them to further their education. Grace Anyanewa Ichepa reports that Mrs. Otom made this donation on behalf of the Governor's Wife's Forum Against Sexual and Gender-Based Violence. The donation by the Governor's Wise Forum is to assist the victims to further their education and take care of their daily welfare. Dr. Yunis Otum, while presenting the cash to the victims, said the forum shares in their pains and urged them not to allow the trauma weigh them down. We know what we know that 
from monetizing his students. Uh, we will continue to pray that God will give him peace, give him strength, and we want you to know that we heal against his you. The victims who expressed their profound appreciation to the Governor's Rights Forum for the gesture promised to make judicious use of the donation. Dr. Yunizo Tom also received an NGO, World the Talk Foundation, who solicited to partner with the Uni Spring of Life Foundation to fight SGBV, climate change, and improve on agriculture in the state, amongst others. Members of the foundation presented crested t-shirts to the governor's wife as a symbolic gesture to register their stand against sexual and gender-based violence. In Makudi, Grace Anyalewa, Ichepa, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Makudi. Nationwide continues with Elizabeth in Abuja. Fatima. Following the previous executive session at the instance of the Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Judge Akume, critical players in the lottery industry are worried about the lingering issues confronting the lotus sector and are calling on the federal government to intervene. Same as recoveries and of course the issue of personal debit by the CBN accounts of uh, some of the operators. So I know that uh, we are already into action and uh, so much is already uh, uh, being done and it's just a matter of time we have a breakthrough. Every operator connects to a central system and that way we're able to see each transaction, every single transaction online, real-time, mobile phones, or whatever device they decide to use, we'll be able to track it, we'll be able to see, and that way we'll be able to know what actually is generated for government and then to the operators as well. Issues brought to the fore include cashing out, replication of foreign games like the Ghana game, revenue generation, and transparency in tax payment. The national game, the Director General says, when replicated, will boost the lottery industry while creating positive social changes. Nigeria is set to begin the management of more than 12,000 kilometers of its major highways through private funding. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raju Fashola, discussed this while introducing the Highway Development Management Initiative in Abuja. Abdullah Mohammed reports. Nigeria has more than 200,000 kilometers of road networks, with the federal government responsible for more than 35,000 kilometers. Funding the maintenance and reconstruction of these roads have been difficult. That explains why the federal government selected 12 highways within the six geopolitical zones for private investors to manage. The 12 roads aggregate to a total of 1,963 0.24 kilometers. This represents 5.6 percent of the 35,000 kilometers of federal road network. The initial capital investments that we foresee is something in the order of 1.134 trillion, and the employment potentials are estimated to be 50,000 plus direct jobs and 200,000 plus indirect jobs. This is expected to translate into prompt reconstruction, maintenance as well as stimulating businesses along the highways. I have the pleasure to announce that the HDMI portal, https forward slash HDMI dot works and housing dot gov ng forward slash will open on Monday, the 29th of March, 2021. The portal will be open for all HDMI-related functions, as earlier stated, and most importantly, the request for qualification application for the value-added concessions, which will be officially advertised on the same Monday, 29th March, 2021. With the takeoff of the Highway Development Management Initiative, observers are hopeful that the highways will supersede their lifespan, checking the menace of overloading, especially that which involves heavy-duty vehicles. In Abuja, Abdullahi Mohammed, NT News. 
We shift attention to aviation. Catering services suspended at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic are to resume on domestic flights immediately. Minister of Aviation Hardis Rika said the decision was taken in consideration of the businesses involved in the provision of in-flight refreshments that have been adversely affected by the suspension. He however said that modalities and protocols for the resumption of the services will be worked and rolled out by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority which should be in line with international practices. And next is Sports Update with Olumide Eguntola. Of the 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifiers against Benin Republic on Saturday and Lesotho on Tuesday next week, the Super Eagles coach cannot draw and the players say they are focused on getting favorable results from the matches. Go there to qualify, you know, we need a draw to be qualified already, but all the time we want to win the match. If we can go further than we did in the previous AFCON, that's the aim and we, it starts against Benin, so let's try and get the three points. It's the biggest African tournament, so we want to be part again. Still on football, quarter finalists have emerged in the 2021 edition of Ramat Cup after their conquest in the round of 16. Kanu will face Kwara, while Ogun will tackle Gombe. It will be Bauchi against Kebi. Sokoto square up against Oyo State in the quarterfinal matches slated for Wednesday in Kano. Elsewhere, newly inaugurated sports associations in Lagos State have been implored to evolve dynamic and strategic measures to make sports development in the state a reference point in the country. Commissioner for Youth and Social Development, Shagun Daudu, at the inauguration advised them to complement the efforts of the Babajide Sanwolu led administration. We have, we have brought in the younger ones. We all know what happened last year. It was a way of the youth crying out for, for attention. In another development, to produce future stars, there is the need to train physical education teachers and school sports officials in meeting up with international standards. It is in this light that the Nigerian School Sports Federation organized a two-day workshop with the theme Repositioning School Sports through Strategic Management to Enlighten the Sports Officials. In producing a podium athlete, you should have a well-planned program. We've been taking through communication, using communication as a tool for effective management. The seminar will be aired three times in a year with Sports Update, Ulum De Kuntola, NT News. And Sports Update ends nationwide today. Thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to connect with us at the NTA, Stand Against Rape and Rapists. Good evening.